Um, um, in our lives, we can be influenced by many things, whether it's our friends, family, teachers, school in general. Um, one of the biggest things, though, if you think about it, we get um, influenced by is the media. Um, TV, movies, advertising, video games, all of these things. Um, possibly the biggest factor in influencing all of us in modern society. Um, the problem with this is the fact that it has such a large influence is that children, when it comes to violence in these mediums, um, really don't know what's going on. Um, these images of violence, my main claim is that these images of violence have a negative effect on children. Um, my main point being, children are very susceptible um, to outside influence. Um, obviously, children are learn, do most of their learning, people most, do most of their learning, in the early ages of um, development, just like as a child. Um, children doing uh, violent TV shows and their identification with the aggressive same-sex TV characters um, and their perceptions that TV violence is realistic um, all links to later aggression in life later down the line for them, uh, both males and females. Um, so when I watch TV and I see somebody who's around my age, a male who's kind of similar to me, go out and kill someone, to me, or a younger child, I guess in particular, um, it's a higher likelihood that they would go out and think it's more okay. Um, there's a lot of effects of this media violence. Um, you can have, there's four different types of effects that they found that um, Gene Tepperman of the Alliance La Act uh, Action Alliance for Children has found that these four categories that children um, fall into. The aggressor effect, which means they encourage violent behavior or um, to actually go out and do it themselves. The victim effect, which means they, inc like, they increase fearfulness in themselves and others. Um, the bystander effect, which means they're just kind of callous to all the violence. They just kind of sit around, they accept the violence as usual, normal, um, things like that. And also an appetite effect, which means they have a building desire to watch and or participate in more violence. Um, these violent scenes that children are most likely to model their behavior after are, like I said, ones in which they identify themselves with the perpetrator of the violence or the perpetrator is either rewarded or like glorified for this violence. Um, also, when the um, children see this violence, they perceive the scene as telling it like it really is in the real world. So it's like they're not really sure whether this is real or whether they actually shouldn't do these things. Um, my second main point is that the consequences of media violence are subpar in the sense that they're either usually positive, so the, the perpetrator of the violence is actually getting rewarded, um, like Dirty Harry in um, his movies are, it's like, he gets like glorified that he's going out and killing these people in a sense. And um, rather than like when children watch a bloody murder on like CSI, it's crazy bad, but at the same time you usually see a, um, the, uh, perpetrator getting like brought to justice or um, found guilty by the court, so on and so forth. Um, the other also thing is that like um, uh, the other consequence is that like things are unreal. <coughs> so like when somebody gets killed sometimes there's like the um, the high okay so <laughs> the uh, death and grief factor. So when somebody dies on in these um, on like TV movies or whatnot, the kids don't understand that like there's a huge impact on family members, so on and so forth. So it's almost like they, you don't see this a lot of times. You just see somebody die, something happen, but you don't see any other impact along the lines of what other people are feeling because of those actions. Um, and then the last part is obviously way too many um, criminals go completely unpunished in certain things. Um, they just kind of get off scot-free. Kids don't really know what's going on. They just think it's acceptable. Um, yeah, so like I said, these images of violence are a very bad thing to have in our media. Um, it's kind of unacceptable, really. The fact that they have such a large, in large influence on children, it just can't go on much longer.
The intro is okay. It sets up the topic area a little bit. Uh, you state a claim. It sounds like your proposition. And then you restate the claim, and you're restating it in a slightly different way. So I'm not sure what the focus is going to be. There's not a setup of what the supporting structure is going to be, and when you get into the first point, I'm not even sure what that point is. You did have a clear label on the second point when you got to it, but when I say clear, you said it was the second point, but the phrasing on it is, it's not a very clear declarative sentence. It kind of rambles on, and it needs to be a lot more focused. Early on, you talk about some of the issues, you know, watching violence on television, and there's a reference to same-sex TV characters, and I'm not sure if you're saying, you know, people who are watching it, if I'm a man watching a man commit crime, I identify with that crime, or if you're talking about, you know, uh, gay people committing a crime. It's just not clear what it is the reference is to in that situation. So you need to be a lot more specific. The only source citation I got was the uh, citation of the one expert for the four theories that explain the impact of violence and how it might uh, affect kids. But those are all theories. There's no evidence that any of those theories is actually acted out or it's influencing people. It's very speculative at this point. You're very dependent on hypothetical examples and some social in institutions like uh, the movies and TV shows that you mentioned, Dirty Harry and CSI, to illustrate the point. But we have no documentation that kids are affected by any of this. Uh, you don't even have an example of some kid who thinks that what happens in CSI is real life. You just say that that's what the kids think. And so we, a lot of assertions, but not a lot of proof on those points. And that's something that you're going to need in your arguments if you want to convince people. Uh, having a good argument doesn't necessarily mean that you've got just the claims. The claims are only part of what's going on here. You need to have the proof and the reasons that go beyond that. Uh, I thought the presentation, you seemed a little bit uncertain. There's some nervousness in your feet and your hands at the beginning. Uh, you settled down a little bit on that. I, I, I don't mind the idea of the personification that you have where you're talking from a personal perspective, but I think that you also have to show us for instance, beyond your personal experience and the way you see these things, some indication that others react the way that you're talking about or that somebody has uh, believes that that's the case and we should trust those people because they're credible. All right, thank you. Vivian.